Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bishop Garrigan High School. Tonight we've got high school baseball action, the first high school baseball contest of the season right here on Hometown Radio KLGA. Brian Wilson filling in for Tyler Lance. Tyler's a little busy down at the state track and field championships in Des Moines. And with everything moved up a week, well, we've got baseball here at the same time as state track. And we just heard our final state track report of the evening. So Tyler will be off till tomorrow. We'll have more live updates from Des Moines. But the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears and the Algona Bulldogs, the Crosstown Classic here tonight as the Golden Bears for them. This is the first game of the season. The Bulldogs have played twice already this week. They are 0-2, a tough 3-2 loss to Charles City earlier this week. And then last night, an 11-7 loss to Spencer in which the Bulldogs got down 8-2 early on. Never could quite come back in that one. So uh, trying to get their first win of the season are both teams here this evening. A much different night than last night. It was hot and humid. The wind was howling out of the south, which here at Bishop Garrigan they'd be blowing out. Tonight it's a little cool. The wind's blowing in, and we'll see how that affects the players here this evening. We had a chance to catch up with both head coaches this week, get their thoughts on the 2022 season. We'll take a quick hit, or actually we caught up with co-head coach Brian Patterson of the Bishop Garrett Golden Bears, along with Algona head coach Chad Slagle. But we'll take a quick time out. We're going to come back. We'll hear from the coaches, starting lineups and more right after this here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. High school sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Brought to you by these sports club members. Algona Frame and Auto Body, Collision Specialist, a total commitment to excellence. Water Connection, from softeners to bottled water and service, call 295-SOFT. Dump It, commercial and residential garbage. They do the dirty work so you don't have to. hy V. use the fuel saver, fill your cart, fuel your car. Algona Livestock Auction, Highway 169 North, sale every Monday. Lusher Family Dentistry, serving your family since 1965 on Call Street in Algona. Style Salon, your salon in Algona. Create yourself. Farmer State Bank, proud to be part of our community for 125 years. With offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend. Chemco Tires, they're all you need to know about tires and service. Sponsoring this broadcast on Hometown and Home Country Radio. How's the offseason been going for your team and uh, the preseason workouts for you guys as you get ready for that first game? Uh, you know, the kids have been working real hard this offseason. I, I really think that uh, we had a good uh, winter-spring workout with our uh, pitching and hitting. Um, guys really bought into a new process that we've kind of been doing with our hitting and our hitting philosophy um, and our, our – uh, our pitching coach, Coach Wadley, has really done an, uh, an awesome job, I think, with our pitchers and getting their velocity and command up. So hopefully, I'm hoping with uh, the way we work this uh, you know, spring that uh, you know, good things will happen this summer and we see, we see some good progress. And, you know, Coach, as you get ready for the season, obviously you've got a lot of guys who are coming off of spring sports. So for them specifically, how do you make sure they hit the ground running and they're ready for the stretch that the baseball schedule is of games nearly every night? Yeah, as far as the uh, spring sports kids, um, uh, we, we kind of worked our practices so that they were still able to come in and get, uh, you know, ground balls, get their pitching workouts in, uh, uh, get their hitting workouts in. So... Um, they're really not that far behind. They should, uh, you know, be, you know, basically on the same page as the other guys. Um, so, you know, we're looking for those guys to come in and compete right away. Coach, you kind of referenced what the pitching looks like a little bit earlier, but I know you did graduate a few good guys from last season, and you've got some new arms coming in. So can you expand just a little bit on what the pitching looks like this season and who we might be seeing take up a lot of those innings? Yeah, you know, obviously losing the guys that we lost, I mean, that, that's definitely one of the big uh, question marks for our team. And, uh, you know, when you lose, uh, you know, Rendoni and, and Waringa and, and you know, those two guys like that, I mean, we've definitely got to replace innings. But, um, you know, I, I think, uh, well, I hope anyways, I hope, you know, Miles Goshi is going to pick up some extra innings. I hope Garrett picks up some, uh, Garrett Goshi picks up some extra innings and, and um um, Ishan's looked really good for us here in the spring, uh, Jensen Ishan. So um, hopefully those guys can add some innings, you know, add some more innings. Carlos uh, Gomez had a, a really good um, summer for us at JV ball last year, and we're, we're hoping that, 
you know, he can kind of start where he left off last year. And um, I don't know, I think we got a couple younger guys. I, I'm hoping that will be able to, you know, get on the – get on the bump and uh, throw some strikes for us as well. So we'll see if, if those younger guys can kind of come through for us. I think, you know, that they'll mix right in with the guys, uh, you know, as far as pitching goes pretty well. And, uh, Coach, on the other side of that, you also graduated your catcher from last year with Wyatt Strait. How's the catching position looking for you guys coming into the year? Actually, I think uh, catching, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be all right right there. Uh, we've got uh, – um, Tristan Larson, who's, uh, um, has been our, you know, backup catcher, so to speak, or our JV catcher. And, and, uh, he's, he's a really good, really good receiver back there. Good leader. Um, uh, we're, I don't think we're going to lose a beat there in my opinion. Um, but you know, losing strikes offensive of power and, uh, what he did for us offensively, um, that's going to be, a another, another question mark. But uh, as far as defensively goes, I think we're going to be all right with Tristan back there. Um, the shortstop, you know, losing uh, losing Waringa and uh, Rendoni. Uh, we've got two guys battling there. Uh, we've got um, um, uh, geez, I'm trying to think who we got there. Uh, we've got um, Tate Swigels battling there with uh, with with a couple other guys. Um, they look, you know, they look pretty tough uh, as far as who's battling against one another. Um, and then we we're also looking at our outfield. Our outfield's got a couple of question marks, but uh, I, I think some guys that played infield might get moved out there. We've got an Urple Dink kid that's kind of a utility player that's been battling that shortstop, but I think he's also going to be able to help us out in the outfield. Um, so, you know, trying to replace those seniors that we lost is definitely uh, going to be a, a, a little bit of an issue to start with. But I think once they get comfortable, I think we're going to be – I think we'll be all right. Um, but uh, losing the, the hits that we lost with those seniors and losing the innings on the mound is definitely uh, uh, a big question mark, and, and hopefully we get that figured out right away. And, Coach, looking at the conference, how do you size up the North Central heading into the season? Well, I, I thought last year we were a pretty, pretty tough uh, conference. Um, you know, as far as this year goes, you know, um, in, my, in my opinion, I mean, it's it's Webster City's it's Webster City's conference to lose. I mean, they've been so solid here the last five six years that until somebody can prove me wrong and beat them, uh, it's still their conference to lose. They've got a ton of athletes, even though they lost some athletes, they still got some studs coming back. Um, Humboldt's going to have a real solid squad. They got a great senior class. The nice thing about that is we split with both of those teams, so uh, you know we're, we we can battle with them. It's just we're going to have to show up and play. I think Hampton Dumont's going to be a, a sleeper team that's got some ability too. That uh, they they're going to be able to knock some some uh, teams off as well. High School Sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio, brought to you by these sports club members. Catholic Charities, offering professional counseling services to families and individuals of all faiths. Learn more at cathchar.com. Algona Plumbing and Heating, where a good flush always beats a full house. Grassmasters, get tips and advice from their lawn care professionals. Grassmasters, growing satisfied customers. American Glass, for all your glass needs. Think American. Walker Chiropractic and Wellness, serving Algona, Sway City, and the surrounding areas with chiropractic, nutritional care, and physical therapy services. Dr. Bill Stroman, giving you something to smile about. CB Grain Solutions, satisfaction guaranteed. Runky Brothers Full Service. Experience the Runky Brothers difference for all your auto service and repair needs. Sponsoring this broadcast on Hometown and Home Country Radio. All right, so yeah, I guess just first of all, if you just want to tell me a little bit about how the offseason's been going for you guys and how you guys have been getting ready for that first game. It's been good. We've had a lot of participation in our offseason program. We did a lot of pitching workouts this summer that had great participation. Um, Garrett has been a great leader, our junior, and then Jacob Lear has been a great leader, too. They've been getting us ready, and we feel pretty ready um, pitching-wise, so we'll see how the sticks come. 
you referenced pitching, and in the course of a high school season, you really never can have enough pitchers. I know you guys graduated a couple good arms from last year, but who are maybe a couple new guys as far as pitching goes you feel might step into a bigger role this season? Garrett, again, he, he's our catcher, our everyday catcher. He's really growing on the mound as well. Um, after that, Jacob's going to continue throwing. Hollis will continue to throw our shortstop. He'll get in there. Drew Forward is going to be a conti continued arm as well. Um, after that, we have a couple sophomores like Justin Bauer and Drew Lappy. They're going to look for everyday things. And Keaton Helleseth, our freshman, he's going to buy for a couple innings as well. So hopefully everything works out for everybody to get theirs. And, you know, one of the realities of summer baseball, too, is you've got a lot of guys, they're playing sports in the spring, they're transitioning to baseball. So for them, how did you make sure they're getting ready for the baseball season while also competing in the spring? Well, the first thing is they get to compete and track and golf, and they're successful there. So that's great to have our golf team go to sectionals and those kind of things. And th two of our guys or three of our guys are going to run at state this weekend, which is awesome and great to see. So we just allow them to come in an extra day or in the mornings and get some extra hits in or take balls on after them. We just let it leave up to the mercy of them, and they've chosen to take that route and do the extra work because that's the kind of guys that we have on our team. Kind of looking up and down the lineup, and now you've got a few experienced guys back. You referenced Garrett, you know, Hollis being a senior as well, Jacob, a few other guys. But, you know, how do you feel the depth of your lineup is hitting-wise this year? You know, I don't, I don't exactly know. We've got some green guys in the lower part of our lineup that we'll see. I know they look, they look good in the tunnel. They look good off a pitching machine, and they look good in batting practice, and they look comfortable. But you never know with baseball. You could go 0 for 3 one game and 4 for 4 the next. So it just kind of depends. But I'm pretty confident that our kids are mentally tough enough to take good at-bats, and that's what I'm looking forward to. You've got a couple games coming up here. I'll go on Friday. You've got a couple games on Saturday. What do you expect to learn about your team here over the first week or so of the season as you you know get into the conference schedule coming up later on? Well, just what our our bats can do and what we can do in certain situations. But obviously, as a baseball person, you always look at the pitcher mound and how can we throw in a certain amount of games? Who can throw and how consistent can they can throw? And that's what we're looking forward to. And we pretty, feel pretty confident in them. You know, coaches, specifically as it comes to Friday, obviously you guys open up Algona. I know regardless of the sport, Garrigan versus Algona is kind of a game people have circled on the schedule. So just, you know, what's the excitement level around the guys to open up with the Crosstown game? I, there's a little juice at practice today, and it's Wednesday. And, you know, you can feel the juice kind of ramp up. And that, that's fun as a guy that's, that's played in the rivalry, and I've coached in it a few times now. It's just great to see, all, first of all, the respect that each program has for one another and the want to win for their school and their side of town. It just is really fun, and it means a lot to both sides. But at the end of the day, it's game one, and you know, hopefully we're not the same team as game one as we are at game 30 or whatever we get it to. But it's going to be a fun game, so I hope everybody comes out and supports their side. You know, Coach, taking kind of a wider look at this season, uh, as you look around the top of Iowa West here, just what do you see? How do you feel kind of stacks up going into the year? Uh, it's a questionable conference. Garner won it last year. They returned a fair share of their top three pitchers, so I'd have to say they're probably the number one preseason predicted. Um, Four City is always very good. Um, but we were right there last year. We dropped a couple games that we probably shouldn't have where we want back, obviously, and we finished second or third, whatever you want to call it, after a tie at the top. And I think we can compete right there with them if we have a good night on the mound and keep our teams running down, down low. And I think we're, we'll be right there competing at the top, hopefully. Uh, Coach, just to wrap up here, kind of along those same lines, what do you feel constitutes a successful year for Garrigan baseball? I think looking forward to if what we look at Friday night when we open against Algona and when we open up district play, how have we improved and what's been the process of evolution and growth that we've experienced mentally and physically and those kind of things. Um, I always constitute like winning the town, winning our conference, winning the district. I think those are successful goals that we can look at, but those aren't just the end-all be-alls. We come back. Time for first pitch tonight right here on Hometown Radio, KLGA, Algona, and Bishop Garrigan. First game of the season for the Golden Bears. Bulldogs looking for that first win, sitting at 0-2. Here's the starting lineups tonight. Uh, first off for the Bulldogs of Algona, Garrett Goshi will lead things off and play second base. Tate Slegel will bat in the number two spot. Slegel will do the pitching tonight for the Bulldogs. Jensen Eichen at first base will bat third. Aiden Ulrich will play third base and bat fourth. Alex Manski will bat in the number five spot and play left field. Carlos Gomez in center will hit sixth. Miles Goshi is in, or is playing, he's the designated hitter tonight. He'll bat seventh. 
He will uh, bat for the shortstop, Jaden Erpelding, tonight for the Bulldogs. Tristan Larson will bat eighth to do the catching, and Stren Crouch will bat ninth to play right field. For Bishop Garrigan, their starting lineup looks like this. Cal Berkey will lead things off out in center field. Nathan Marin will bat second and play second base. Garrett Hyde will do the catching and bat third. Drew Fogarty will clean up. He'll, bat, he'll do the pitching tonight for the Golden Bears. Jacob Lear will bat fifth and play third base. Drew Lappy will play first and bat sixth. Hollis Bodie batting seventh and playing shortstop. Colin Casey batting eighth and playing right field. Justin Bauer batting in the number nine spot, and he will play left field. Bears, the home whites, black undershirts, gold letter numerals, the gold caps tonight. I'll go to high. Wearing the black tops, gray pants, red letter numerals with some white trim. Now, obviously, the Bears don't have any stats from this year because this is their first game last year. Uh, Fogarty taking a look at his uh, pitching stats last year for the Golden Bears. He was 4-2 and two on the season at, through 43 and two-thirds innings. Opponent or he had a 5.13 ERA. Opponents at 243 against him. Allowed 43 hits, 42 runs, 32 of them were earned. He walked 28 and struck out 48 in those 43 innings of work. So, tall right hander ready to go. And we are set. Garrett Goshi to lead things off defensively for the Golden Bears. He got Bauer in left, Berkey in the center, Casey in right. Lear at third, Bodie at short, Marin at second, Lappy over at first, Hyde behind the plate, and Drew Fogarty on the mound for the Golden Bears. The right-hander winds and fires. First pitch of the ball game is swung on and fouled straight back by Garrett Goshi. He was up there hacking, and he's down a strike, 0 1. So just underway tonight. Wind, what wind there is kind of blowing in from left field. Breaking ball, that one is a little bit high. Count evens up at a ball and a strike. Kind of blowing in, kind of a northwest breeze blowing across the field. One ball, one strike, Fogarty to Goshi. That's a breaking ball that's in there for a called strike, and it's one and two. Fogarty ready to go. Goshi digging back in. Gets a sign from high, and he's ready to go. The one-two offering to Goshi. That's upstairs. Count evens up at two and two. Goshi's got a couple hits on the season thus far. Wind up in the 2-2. Swung on this one sky down the right field line. Drifting over is Colin Casey, and he cannot make the play. It's off his glove. Rounding second and heading, or staying there will be Garrett Goshi. As the wind was pushing that ball away from Colin Casey, it got a glove on it. Hard to tell whether he really had a chance at it or not, as it is. The runner at second base with nobody out for the Golden or for the Bulldogs. It'll be ruled a double. So a leadoff double for Goshi. He's in scoring position. Just went with that outside fastball. Like I said, that wind was pushing it away from Colin Casey down the line. Tate Slagle stands in. Freshman takes that one inside. One ball and no strikes. Tate hit an even 600 on this season. Three hits and five official at-bats through first, the first two games. Stretch the pitch. That one didn't miss by much. 2-0. Just off the plate there. Right at the belt of Slagle. Jensen, or Jensen Eichen on deck. That'd be Aiden Ulrich. Fogarty from the stretch. The pitch. That's low. and The count goes to 3-0. Three balls, no strikes. I'm guessing Coach Chad Slegel telling his young son to keep the bat on the shoulder right here. Stretch of the 3-0. That's a little bit low for ball four, so a four-pitch walk after the double. Runners at first and second. Nobody out for Jensen Eichen. Next up, number 22, Jensen Eichen. Jensen Eichen standing in. Comes in hitting 167 on the young season. Takes a breaking ball for a called strike. 0-1. One hit in his first six at-bats. But when you get 
going early in the season, that average can change pretty quickly. This one's swung on grounded sharply down the third baseline. It's a fair ball right over the bag. Rounding third, coming in to score is Goshi. Slagles into third. It'll be a double right over the bag at third base for Jensen Aishan. And the Bulldogs have a 1-0 lead here, three batters in. And we are sitting right on the line, folks. Someone went right over the base. Just past Jacob Lear. So Aiden Ulrich stands in. Runners at second and third. Nobody out still. A double, a walk, and a double. Ulrich, another freshman. Three freshmen in the starting lineup for the Bulldogs tonight. That breaking ball's outside. 1-0. They all hit in the top five in the order. Slagle, Ulrich, and Alex Mansky. Ulrich did not play the first game. Uh, did play last night. One hit and a couple of bats. Takes a fastball at the belt for a called strike. One and one. The wind up or the stretch of the pitch. That one's a breaking ball off the plate. Count goes to two and one now. Said so first game of the season for Bishop Garrigan. They'll go to they'll go to eyes. Zero and two coming in. Had the lead late against Charles City, but Charles City got two in the bottom of the seventh to beat him. Stretching the pitch. That one's upstairs, and the count goes to three and one. Three balls and a strike to Ulrich. A walk would load the bases. Stretch by Fogarty in the pitch. That's a breaking ball over for a called strike on three and one. He did not give in. Didn't give in with a fastball. He threw him the hook. And now the count even their count goes full three and two with runners at second and third and nobody out. The pitch. Swung on and missed. He got the fastball by him on the outer half, and there's one down. One away. Here comes Alex Mansky. Next up, number four, Alex Mansky. The Bulldog freshman actually coming off the injury list here. He broke a wrist during track and field. But he's back out there. Still got a little bit of bandage on it. But now Fogarty takes a little bit of time. Actually, high end calls time. He's going to go out and talk to Fogarty real quick. Top half of the first inning. Just underway tonight here on Hometown Radio KLGA. Good thing I double checked the calendar. I thought we, we were expecting a 6 30 first pitch, but no, oh, 6 o'clock. We'd have missed a little bit. Stretching the pitch by Fogarty to Mansky. Fastball at the belt for a called strike, 0 and 1. Carlos Gomez waits on deck. Alex Mansky with a hit and three at bat so far on the season. That one's a fastball off the plate, 1 and 1. One ball, one strike, one out, one in, and two on right now. The Bulldogs of Algona. Fogarty from the stretch, the pitch. That's outside, two and one. Two balls and a strike. 310 feet down the lines here at Bishop Garrigan, 335 to the gaps. 360 to straightaway center. Stretching the pitch. Up and in, nearly hit him. Alex ducked out of the way. The, the, some of his teammates saying, hey, come on. Throw that shoulder out. Wear one. Easy to say when you're in the dugout. 3-1 pitch. The breaking ball off the plate from all four. So the base is loaded now. Two doubles and two walks. And here comes Carlos Gomez as Coach Rob Meister out to talk to his right-hander. Carlos Gomez coming to the plate here. Gomez looking for his first hit of the season, hitless in three at-bats. Quick meeting on the mound right now to talk things over.
This is the meeting on the mound over. Goma's standing in. So bases full of Bulldogs. It's one nothing Algona. Still only one out here in the top of the first. A breaking ball at the knees for a called strike. A one one. Miles Goshi waits on deck. As the sun peeks through the clouds. Breaking ball didn't miss by much. Just off the plate. One and one. Sun really affecting those on the right side. First base, second base, right field. Kind of looking into that sun. Pitch. Just off the plate. Gomez thought about offering at it, but laid off. Two and one. Two balls and a strike. Slagle at third. Aishin at second. Breaking ball cut on and missed by Gomez. As Alex Mansky's over at first and the count evens up at two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Fogarty could use a strikeout right here. Stretching the pitch. Breaking ball, swung on ground, slowly back towards the left side, charging his Lear. He'll only have one play at first base. He got Gomez. They throw back behind to try and get Aishin, but he's back in time. It brings in a run. There was no chance to get Slagle coming home on that slow roller. Lear did get the out at first, but it's an RBI ground out by Gomez. 5-3 to three on the put out. It's 2 nothing Algona. Aisha goes to third. Alex Mansky goes to second. And there goes Miles Goshi. Goshi takes a breaking ball for a called strike. 0 on one Goshi. A couple hits and six at bats so far this season. Stretching the pitch. Swung this one skied into shallow right field. Coming in is Colin Casey. Going out is Marin. It's Casey that makes the catch, loses his hat in the process, but that'll do it for Algona here in the first. They get a run on two hits, no errors, and they leave two. We have played a half. It is Algona 2, Bishop Garrigan coming up right after this here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. If you're not filling with Cenex Premium Diesel, then you're not giving your fuel system the premium treatment. Cenex Roadmaster XL comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn, while restoring your power by up to 4.5% and your fuel economy by up to 5%. Typical number two diesel? I guess it covers the basics. Cenex Premium Diesel. Diesel that doesn't mess around. Contact New Way K&H Cooperative, your certified Cenex distributor, at 1-800-445-4118. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission, to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people, and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. We come back, home half of the first. Algona leading Bishop Garrigan 2 to nothing as the Golden Bears come to bat for the first time here in 2022. I want to welcome everybody in on algonaradio.com, also along the Internet on our KLGA YouTube live stream, our first, uh, first ever summer baseball YouTube live stream. So here we go. Part of history there. Got to thank our sponsors, part of our YouTube live stream. Uh, those sponsors include your Chemda Motor Center in Algona. I get so used to saying Chemda GM Center, but now they got everything. So your Chemda Motor Center in Algona, Algona Municipal Utilities. Also your state farm agent in Algona, Billy Offerman. And Hyde Endeavors are great uh, stream sponsors. You'll be seeing a lot more of them coming up throughout the season as Cal Berkey is greeted by a fastball to the shoulder here by Tate Slegel. So he takes one for the team, and he's aboard. Cal Berkey 
Gets hit by the first pitch of the game from Slagle. Slagle, a freshman. Got one appearance last year as an eighth grader on the mound, but uh, his first start at the varsity level. Quick throw over, but back in plenty of time is Cal Berkey. Berkey, Marin, Hyde, then Fogarty do up this inning for the Golden Bears. Down 2-0. Slagle from the belt. Fastball swung on, fouled back to the screen as the runner was off and going. What was that one? Got the umpire's face mask. Got everything there. Is Slagle throwing that fastball into Nathan Mirren. He's up a strike right now. And Coach Rob Meister talking to Nathan right now. I think he might have wanted him to take that pitch. Defensively for Algona, left to right across the outfield. You got Alex Mansky in left, Carlos Gomez in center, Stren Crouch over in right field. Aiden Ulrich at third, Gene Durpleding at short, Garrett Goshi at second, Jensen Eichen at first, stretching the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a called strike quickly, 0 2 to Marin. Tristan Larson behind the plate. You know, the Bears will try to be running on him tonight. He's got to be ready to pop. Slagle from the belt, quickly ahead 0-2. Stretching the pitch. Fastball right down the middle for a called strike three, and there's one down. I don't know if Marin was looking for a breaking ball that time and didn't get it because that one was right at the knees. So a strikeout brings up Garrett Hine. Doing the catching tonight for Bishop Garrigan. Berkey leads from first. Sun ducks in behind the clouds for the moment. Slagle ready to go. Stretch, and he's going to throw over. It's Berkey's nice white uniform, all dirty. That'll have to be washed tonight. Every once in a while, you can make it through a game. You don't get your clothes dirty, but not like that. Stretch the pitch. The breaking ball in the dirt. It gets past Larson, and Berkey's going to round second and take a look. As he gets the stolen base there, a good pitch to run on a breaking ball in the dirt. One ball and no strikes to Garrett Hine. That one just off the plate. 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Drew Fogarty waits on deck. Runner in scoring position. Berkey got hit by the first pitch of the game. He's at second base now after a steal. Stretch by Slagle on the pitch. Fastball a little bit low. A nice scoop there by Larson. Digs it out of the dirt. 3-0 and quickly here to Garrett Hine. Stretch. And the pitch. That's a fastball to knees for a called strike. 3-1. and one. Slagle so getting the sign from Larson, ready to go. Like I said, the wind that's blowing across the field here. That fastball is low in the dirt for ball four. So a hit batter, a strikeout, now a walk. Fogarty. Drew Fogarty stands in for the first time here in 2022. Berkey out at second. High and over at first now. The stretch by Slagle on the pitch. Fastball to belt for a called strike. A 1 1. Jacob Lear waits on deck. Slagle gets the sign. He'll come set. No balls in his strike. Pitcher to pitcher right here. And Fogarty takes time right as Slagle was about to come home. Jade Nurpleding, Garrett Goshi trying to keep Berkey close out at second base. Stretching the pitch by Slagle. Fastball. That was close. Called the ball. One and one the count. Sitting just to the right of home plate, so we don't have a perfect angle or anything. Stretching the pitch. That fastball's low gets past Larson. 
Berkey's going to take third. And ever been moving up to second will be Hines. So two runners in scoring position right now without having to put the ball in play. Two balls and a strike to Fogarty. Base hit could tie the game here. 2 nothing now, Gilna. Bottom half of the first. Stretching the pitch. Swung this one lined foul behind a fastball was Fogarty. It's 2-2. Two and two. That was lined foul off to the right. Larson's got to make sure he smothers anything in the dirt right here. Stretching the pitch. Fastball swung on, popped foul. That'll get out of play down the right field line. As that wind gust there knocked over our streaming computer. Hopefully everything's okay. We will get video back up on the stream in just a minute. Okay. We knocked it out. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie Merrill doing the streaming tonight. Oh, swung on and missed for strike three on the breaking ball. But it's get pa- it gets past Larson, and Fogarty will reach safely, and the bases will be loaded. And that one there, Tristan Larson might have had a chance to get Fogarty, but if he throws that ball, Cal Berkey's coming in to score, so wisely held on to it. So a strikeout pass ball, and the bases are now loaded. So as we get our video stream back up and in, and that one might oh. I thought it nearly hit Lear there, but they say no. It was inside. It popped away from Larson. One ball and no strikes. But we had a gust of wind there, literally knocked over our streaming computer and popped things out. So, Fastball right at, wow, that was going right at my boss's head. Jeez, Jacob, take it easy. He's about had a heart attack. One ball, one strike. All right, streaming is back up. There we go. All right. One ball, one strike. This one swung on a miss on a fastball there, one and two. Slagle's got a very good arm for a freshman. Pumps it up there around 80 miles an hour. Working from the windup here with the bases loaded and one away. The pitch on the way. Swung this one lined out into right center field. It's going to get down for a base hit. It's going to score at least two. Crouch gets it back in quickly. So that'll tie the baseball game. As Jacob Lear makes the Bulldogs pay. First hit of the game for Bishop Garrigan. And it's a single to right field that brings in two. And the go-ahead run is now at third. Still only one out. It was a one-two fastball. Caught a little too much of the plate. Lear lined it down the... Into right center field. So it's two to two. Fogarty's over at third and now Lear at first. Slagle ready to go from the belt. Stretching the pitch. At the knees for a called strike. 0 one one Fogarty's at third now. He reached on a dropped third strike. He was struck out on a breaking ball. He's the go-ahead and run right now here in the bottom half of the first. Slego ready to go. Stretching the pitch. Bunted right up the first baseline. Aishan's going to field it. He's going to make the tag. He's out at first base. Did they... Oh, well, actually, the umpire never signaled, and they're going to say safe. They're going to say he missed the tag, and oh, that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to see the video replay on that one because I think he got the tag. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to call him out. Yeah. The home plate umpire will overrule there, but, yeah, he got him. I Sorry, Bishop Garrigan, folks, if you're, if you're listening, you're watching, he got the tag. He didn't miss it. So. <laughs> but it did bring in the go-ahead run. It was a nice bunt. Put down the first base line that time by Drew Lappy. Three unassisted on the putout. 
But Fogarty comes in from third, and Bishop Garrigan now leads 3-2. to two. As Hollis Bodie stands in for the first time. Somehow his pants are already dirty before the game started. Stretching the pitch. Inside and low. 2-0. and Notice that when he was going out to get his lineups were being introduced. He got the he got that pair that wasn't bright white. Two balls and no strikes. Fouled at home plate. Caught a piece of Tristan Larson there. Two and one. Bodie talking to co head coach Brian Patterson. Two balls, a strike, two outs, a runner at second, three to two now in favor of Bishop Garrigan. Slagle from the belt, stretching the pitch. Swung on and missed, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Slagle trying to get out of this inning, the pitch. Just missed the low. Didn't miss by much. The count goes full. Three and two. That one was close as well. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Three in for the Golden Bears as they've taken the lead back. The pitch just inside from all four. Second walk of the inning issued by Slagle. He's hit a batter as well. Colin Casey comes up to bat. Slagle peers in, gets a sign from Larson, the pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt. Nice scoop by Larson to keep everybody where they are. One ball, no strikes. For the Bears, would like Colin to be the mighty Casey at the bat. We got them all, folks. It's just the first game of the season. 2-0. Tyler may have the stats, but I got the bad jokes. Two balls and no strikes. Stretch by Slagle on the pitch. Fastball at the belt for a called strike, two and one. Justin Bauer, the number nine batter, waits on deck. So both teams have gotten deep into their lineup in this first inning. Stretch on the pitch. Fastball swung on a miss. Casey was late on that one. And if I'm Tristan Larson, I'm putting down the number one right now and telling him to throw it right there again because Casey wouldn't catch up. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Fastball swung on a miss for strike three, and that'll do it for the Bears here in the first. But they get three runs on one hit. No errors, they leave one. Actually, they leave two. We've played through one. Bishop Garrigan leading three to two over Algona High. We'll take a quick timeout. Come back with more from Bishop Garrigan right here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. Sports Club members bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Kasuth Regional Health Center. Make KRHC your home for health care. North Iowa Appliance, Highway 18 East Algona, where they sell the best and service the rest. Tom Eichen Sales, your store in the country on Highway 18 West, Algona. Greg Penning and Company, LLC, your tax service professionals in Algona and Bancroft, where everyone counts. Yemlin Builders and Quality Apartments for Rent. Beauty and craftsmanship that will never go out of style. Albert Electric, flip the switch to Albert Electric. Call Neil at 320-0305. Iowa Lakes Community College, your community, your college. Feed Mill Coffee Company in downtown Algona, where community connects. All sponsors of this broadcast. As we come back, top half of the second inning, 8 9 1 for Algona. Tristan Larson, Strand Crouch, and then Garrett Goshi against Drew Fogarty. 3 to 2 in favor of Bishop Garrigan. Both teams had chances to maybe get a few more there in that first inning, but here we are, 3 2. Fogarty ready to go. Breaking ball just off the plate, one ball and no strikes.
They wind up in the pitch on the way to Larson. That's a breaking ball. That one hops up there. It was a 58-footer. Two balls and no strikes. Our first baseball broadcast of the season. We'll have some softball games starting next week. Softball, uh, softball starts next week. And hopefully next Friday night we can be over at Algona High School. They're trying to wrap up that brand-new field. And they're still working on it. Still got some work to do, but hopefully we can be there next Friday night. That one's in there at the belt, 3-1 and one now to Larson. Strand Crouch coming up. Three balls and a strike. Fogarty ready to go. The wind up in the pitch. That's a breaking ball. It's in the dirt. Ball four. Third walk issued by Fogarty thus far. As here comes Strand Crouch. Crouch, two hits and six at bats so far this season. Ready to go on the pitch. That one's at the knees for a called strike. They're bringing concessions to, you know, our camera person here. But I will say it's hard to eat and talk at the same time. I, my mom did tell me not to talk with my mouth full. That's not a good idea. Fogarty kind of tosses over there. But back in plenty of time was Tristan Larson. So Crouch, he had a double last night. He had a ball that was hit incredibly hard last night, got into the gap for a double. And if it wasn't for a 40-mile-an-hour wind blowing straight in at Bulldog Park last night, I don't know how far that would have gone. There was a couple balls hit last night over at Bulldog Park that definitely would have gotten a lot further had they not been into the teeth of a hurricane. One ball, one strike, the pitch. The breaking ball just off the inside corner, 2-1. and one. If you saw what... You, if you saw the score of the Iowa baseball game last night against Indiana, you can see what a 40-mile-an-hour wind blowing out can do as Iowa put up 30 runs last night against Indiana. Stretch. Now Fogarty's going to throw over. Oh, wow, was close. Had Larson leading a little bit that time. Two balls and a strike. For their part, Iowa gave up 16, but you, know, you put up 30. Hopefully you win that game. There was a lot of balls that were just skied into the air going out last night in Iowa City. The stretch by Fogarty, the pitch to Crouch. They pitch out. Larson's running. The throw by Hyde is in time. Bodie held on. He's out. Perfect throw there. Right to the glove of Hollis Bodie. The only question was, did he hang on? He shows the umpire of the baseball. And Larson is gunned out by Hyde. Two to, two to six, caught stealing. Catcher throwing out catcher. That's catcher on catcher violence right there. It should be three and one. That was that pitch was outside. It should be three and one, I believe, to Strand Crouch here. I don't have it on the scoreboard yet. Here's the pitch to from Fogarty. Breaking ball. In there for a called strike. And the count goes full now three and two. Bulldogs trying to get something going on the bases there, but that was a perfect throw that time by Hyde. The 3-2 from Fogarty to Strand Crouch. This one roped out into right center field. Berkey's not going to get to this one. All the way to the wall. Strand Crouch rounding second on his way to third. He's not even thinking about stopping at second. He's going to be in there with a triple. Strand Crouch tagged that one to the power alley now. That's where the wind's blowing. No chance Berkey was on his horse. He was aboard Rich Strike right there, but couldn't quite get there. And... Crouch in there with a triple. The tie and run now 90 feet away for the Bulldogs here with one out in the second. Garrett Goshi, he stands in for the second time already. He lined one down the right field line his first time up. That ended up being a double. Came in to score the first run of the game. Swings and smokes this one out in the center. That's going to get over Berkey's head and all the way to the wall. Crouch will come in to score easily. Goshi's rounding second. He's digging for three. This is going to be back-to-back triples for the Bulldogs. Berkey's not playing shallow out there. That one was hit a long way by Garrett Goshi. So Tate Slagle stands in. He walked and scored his first time up. Tie ball game now at three. Go ahead and run for Algona at third base. Stretch by Fogarty in the pitch. Breaking ball in there at the knees for a called strike. 0 1. Oh, 
Yeah, that one was just straight over Cal Berkey's head. One hopped off the 360 sign at straightaway center. This one swung on, chopped to the left side, off the glove of Lear and into left field for a base hit. And that one there, Lear's got to make that play because if it gets past him, Bodie's not going to have a chance to get Slagle. So I don't fault Lear for the effort there. That'll be an infield single. Coming in to score is Garrett Goshi. As, like I said, if that ball gets past Lear, it's going to get in the hole, and Slagle's going to have a hit anyway. So he's got to make a play on it and just kind of hit off the end of his glove. This one swung on skyed into shallow left field. Drifting in is Bauer. Makes the catch, and there's now two away. I should went after that first pitch aggressively, but he hit that one a mile high up in the air. As Aiden Ulrich stands in, a strikeout victim his first time. So 4-3 to three in favor of Algona now. A triple, a triple, and a single. It brought in two. Quick throw over, but Slagle's back in time. Said Ulrich had one of those balls last night that was tagged into the teeth of the wind. Fogarty chases Slagle back one more time. The pitch. Oh, Ulrich went up after one out of the zone that time. Fouls it back off the concession stand. Hopefully, hopefully the walking tacos are okay. No balls and a strike to Ulrich. Alex Mansky waits on deck should the inning continue. Stretch the pitch. Just off the plate with a fastball there. Count evens up at one and one. Uh, Yesterday, things were moved up trying to get ahead of the rain, and then we really never got any. I mean, we got some, but they got the games in and everything. Races, everything. Slagle on the move here, and he's going to be safe. He got under the tag that time of Marin at second base. But once again, that was a good throw by Hyen. I don't know how much more I'd be running on him. That was a good throw. Just a little bit to the shortstop side of the bag. His last, the one he threw out Larson, was on the second base side, and Larson ran right into the tag. Ulrich swings this one, pops it up mile high towards short. Hollis Bodie drifts over, makes the catch, and that'll do it for the Bulldogs here in the second. But they get two runs on three hits, no errors, and they leave one. We have played through an inning and a half. It's now Algona back in front by a count of four to three. Quick timeout back after this here on Hometown Radio, KLGA, and on the, along the Internet with the KLGA, KLGZ, Algona Radio YouTube channel. With today's technology, there's no reason to wait by the mailbox for bank statements. Just sign up for Internet banking and e-statements. This is Sherry at Security State Bank. E-statements reduce the risks of mail fraud and identity theft. Internet banking allows you to check your balances, see checks and deposits that have cleared, transfer funds between accounts, make payments, and say goodbye to paper filing and shredding. Internet banking and e-statements from Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. With over a decade of experience, Jake Ingalls Electric is here to handle any electrical job you could possibly have. From anything agricultural related to complex commercial wiring to something simple like installing a new outlet in your home, Jake Ingalls Electric does it all. Have your wiring done right and call Jake at 515-320-4286. Jake Ingalls Electric, shockingly good service. We head to the home half of the second. Justin Bauer to lead things off for Bishop Gergen. 9-1-2 for the Golden Bears against Tate Slagle. 4-3 Algona. Bulldogs have scored two in each frame. Bishop Gergen got three in their half of the first. As Bauer stands in, lefty against the righty Slagle. Wind up in the pitch. Takes a fastball just off the plate. One ball and no strikes. He said that wind is picked up and kind of he said, blowing from left to right across the field. That one bounced and hit Bauer. 
don't know if it caught, kind of, kind of got caught in Slagle's hand there, slipped in the, hit the grass, and then bounced and hit Bauer. So, second hit batter, he hit the first batter of the game, Cal Berkey, for Bishop Bergen, and now he hits the leadoff batter in the second. Bauer gets a lead from first. Berkey digging in. Stretch of the pitch. Nope, quick throw over, but Bauer is back in time. Slagle from the belt. Quick glance to the runner. Stretch of the pitch to Berkey. Fastball swung on a miss. Cal had a healthy cut that one. That wasn't a singles cut. That was a hit it off the fairway parking lot cut. No balls in a strike. Lead off batter aboard here for Garrigan in the second stretch. No, Slagle's going to throw over, but Bauer back in time. Good crowd on hand. Everybody bundled up. Now, if it was February... You wouldn't be bundled up because it's, you know, close to 60 degrees. Berkey showing bunts. Slagle taking his time. Now he steps off, and he's going to be called for a balk. And he's not sure why. He stepped off with the correct foot, and the base umpire is going to come over and talk to Chad Slagle. He's going to say he flinched. No, he's going to say he flinched uh, when he, after he had come set. So Bauer goes to second on the balk. He's in scoring position and gets Chad Slegel out to talk to his freshman right-hander. Anytime you take that much time from the set position, things like that can happen. We've got a little bit of a left field lounge going on tonight. They're bundled up as well. As they meet it on the mound over, we'll get back to it here. No balls and a strike to Cal Berkey. Justin Bauer, the tying run out of the second base right now for Bishop Garrigan. We're in the bottom half of the second. I'll go to leading Garrigan 4-3, to three, stretching the pitch. Fastball to knees for a called strike, 0-2. Jay Nurpolding sneaking in behind Bauer there. The pitch, breaking ball, call. Ooh, no, nah, I thought that was a called strike three right there. Called that putt too early. That was close. He definitely fooled Berkey, but it was off the plate, they say. One ball, two strikes. Stretching the pitch. Fastball swung on sliced foul off the Elgona dugout. Still one and two. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second. The pitch. Another breaking ball. Nice smother there by Tristan Larson. As he might have taken that one above the uh, above the chest protector there. Yeah, he's it's almost in the throat area. And the umpire will dust off home plate and give him a little bit of time to, to recover. Those chest protectors protect a lot, but they don't get every square inch. Tristan gave one up for the team there because otherwise Bowers over at third base. Two and two now to Cal Berkey. Stretch by Slag on the pitch. Fastball just missed. Three two. Didn't miss by much. Payoff pitch from Slagle to Berkey. This one swung on and missed for strike three. One down. Third strikeout for Slagle thus far. Now 
But as Marin was a strikeout victim his first time up, stretching the pitch by Slegel. Swung on and missed with a fastball. 0-1 the count. Garrett Hyen waits on deck. Tying run out of second for Garrigan. Stretched by Slegel on the pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Smothered there by Larson. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Four aces right now. And a one-run ball game here in the second. Stretching the pitch by Slegel. A little bit low, two and one. Two balls and a strike. Said so Marin went down on three pitches last time. Went down looking on a fastball. Two and one the count. Slagle ready to go. The pitch swung on this one. Grounded slowly to the right side. Garrett Goshi knocks it down. He'll throw to first in time. Bauer goes to third, so he's 90 feet away with a tie and run, but now there's two outs. Four to three on the put out for those of you scoring at home. And Garrett Hyen stands in. Hyen walked. Came in to score. Is on the single by Lear, his first time up. Throughout Tristan Larson trying to steal. Nearly throughout Tate Slegel trying to steal. Last inning. Swung on this one. Grounded slowly back up the middle. Base hit. It's going to get through. That'll tie the game. The hit batter comes in to score. Single up the middle by Hine, and it's a tie game again. 4-4. Fogarty struck out his first time, but the on strike three, the ball popped away from Larson, so he was able to reach safely after striking out. He came in to score. Quick throw over, but Hines back in time. Tie game now, 4-4 in the bottom of the second. Slagle from the belt, ready to go, stretch the pitch. A little bit low with a fastball there to Fogarty, 1-0. Slagle ready to go. Stretching the pitch on the way. Upstairs with a fastball, 2-0. This game's moving along at a snail's pace. We started right at 6. It's 10-7. We're in the bottom of the second. Slagle from the stretch. Quick glance to the runner. And the pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Gets past Larson. Headed down to second. Well behind. Thought about trying third, but Larson had the ball in plenty of time. If he was going to run, it would have been ill-advised. 3-0 and out of Fogarty. Stretch by Slagle on the pitch. That's a fastball at the belt for a called strike. Three and one. Fogarty taking all the way right there. Slagle down three balls and a strike. Ready to go. The pitch upstairs of the fastball. He's walked Fogarty. So it sets up a force out. Still two outs. Jacob Lear, he took a 1-2 fastball that was at the knees and lined it into right center his first time up. Drove in the first couple of Garrigan runs. Breaking ball swung out. He offered at it. It's a strike, but the ball bounces away from Larson. And everybody's going to move up, so that negates the force play. And Lear went around, but now, like I said, another base hit by Lear would bring in two more. Slagle from the belt, the 0-1. Grounded slowly to the left side. Ulrich charges it third. He's got it, throws the first in time, and that'll do it for the Golden Bears here in the second. But they tie the game with a run on a hit. No errors, they leave two. We have played two complete, 4-4 four to four between Algona and Bishop Garrigan. We're back in a minute here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. 
More sports club members bringing you this broadcast. Jensen Chiropractic, care for the whole family. Countryside Barbecue Sauce, two sauces for all seasons. Purpleding Excavating, let them take care of your grading, excavating, and drainage needs. Farm Bureau Financial Services, coverage and protection for what matters most. Visit with local agents David Weich, Jason Brace, Daniel Folk, and Michael Toe. Sudal Tax and Accounting, full service tax and accounting services from the professionals at Sudal Tax and Accounting. Call 395-1040. They see beyond the numbers. Holmes Animal Clinic, caring for your pets from their location at Highway 18 East. They now have an indoor unit to serve equine, cattle, sheep, and goats. Also, on-site boarding for cats and dogs. Oakcrest Funeral Services, helping families celebrate a life lived. All members of the sports club bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. We head to the top of the third, five, six, seven for Algona. Alex Mansky, Carlos Gomez, and Miles Goshi coming up against Drew Fogarty. Four to four, your score. Mansky walked, was stranded out at second base. His first time up. Want to wish a speedy recovery to Alex's big brother Tyler. Had knee surgery recently. That's why he's not playing baseball right now. He's getting ready for his football career out at Iowa Western. As Alex Mansky swings the first pitch, fouls it right off the screen. Luckily, my camera person was not looking because she might have gotten scared. Of it. it was in her direction. No balls and a strike to Mansky. Gomez then Goshi, the pitch. Breaking ball, swung on this one, roped out into right center field. Colin Casey on the run. He's not going to get there, gets past him. Mansky's rounding second. He's looking over at Coach Slagle. He's digging for three. He's going to slide in. The throw is not going to be in time. It's another triple for Algona. They have found that right center field gap. Three triples in the last two innings. Over there, once it got past Colin Casey, Alex Mansky showing the wheels a little bit. Go ahead and run at third with nobody out. No chance for Cal Berkey to get there. The ball being pushed away from him. Gomez stands in at an RBI ground out his first time. They had the squeeze play on, and he just popped it up to the screen. That would have won. Wasn't a suicide squeeze or anything, but they did have Mansky charging once the once he hit it, but he popped it foul into the screen. 0-1. Infield in for Garrigan. At the corners, at least. Medium depth of the... As that breaking ball's in there, he showed bunt again, but took a breaking ball for a called strike. Now, not likely going to bunt. If he can put in a play like he did last time, he'd put the Bulldogs in front. 0-2. Breaking ball swung on, grounded to Bodie at short. He's got it, throws the first in time, but it'll bring home the run, and the Bulldogs take the lead back. So the second... RBI ground out for Carlos Gomez tonight. Did exactly what he was supposed to do in that spot. Put the ball in play. Strikeout doesn't bring you anything. No chance for Bodie. And that's a smart play by Hollis Bodie, too. If you try to throw home there, you don't get him. You start opening yourself up for the big inning. Get the out and move on. You know you're going to have to score at least another run anyway. As that breaking ball from Fogarty to Goshi is in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. You wind up in the pitch. Ooh, that one was at the knees for a called strike, one and one Goshi flew out to shallow right to end the first inning. Wind up in the pitch from Fogarty. That one's off the plate with a fastball, two and one. Tristan Larson due up next. Five to four now in favor of Algona. Wind up in the pitch by Fogarty. Breaking ball is high, and that's three and one. Lead off triple for Alex Mansky, then the RBI ground out by Gomez. 3 1 pitch. That fastball's at the knees, and the count goes to 3 and 2. Wind howling out to right right now. 3 2. That's low for ball four. Walk 
Puck issued there by Fogarty, his fourth. Larson walked his first time up, then was thrown out trying to steal second base. Five to four here, Al going in front now. Top of the third. Larson swings and a fastball didn't get it 0 1. No balls and a strike. Goshi leads from first. Trent Crouch do up next. Larson shows bunt, bunts it up the third base side. It's a good bunt. Fogarty gets to it, throws the first, throws it wildly. And Lappy has to come off the bag to get it. And Larson is safely aboard. That one there, it would have been close at first base had the throw been on the mark. It would have been close to whether or not Larson got there, and they're going to give him a hit. So we will go ahead and do that as well. So here comes Strend, Crouch, Strend, double, or actually tripled his first time up. He let her after Larson was thrown out. He tripled the right center. Came in to score the next batter when Goshi tripled the center. So you got Miles Goshi out at second, Tristan Larson over at first. Breaking ball in the side to Crouch, 1 0. One ball, no strikes. Bodie trying to keep Goshi close out at second. Stretched by Fogarty in the pitch. Swung on this one. It's belted to deep left field. Going back is Bauer. He's on his horse, and he makes the catch right by the fence. Goshi goes back and tags and is going to third. He is in there safely. That ball was hit well by Stren Crouch. Well, that was a heck of a play by Bauer going back to make the catch. So Garrett Goshi stands in. Two down now. That ball was hit a long way by Stren Crouch. Not aided by the wind at all. The last time, like I said, he used that right center field jet stream. This one held up. Bauer able to get back and make a nice catch. So Garrett Goshi stands in. He's been on base twice. He scored twice. He walked and scored back in the first. Or excuse me, he doubled the score, and then he tripled last time up. Hit that one, hit that line shot down the right field line his first time up. Last time he hit it right over the head of Cal Berkey and straight away center. Stretched by Fogarty in the pitch. Now he's going to try the old fake the third, fake the first. And he actually threw it over there. I always remember Rick Sutcliffe doing that back in the 80s, and it never worked back then either. Stretching the pitch by Fogarty. They pitch out, seeing if Larson is going anywhere. Actually, it looks like we got a we got a pinch runner over there at first. They're going to have a courtesy runner. It looks like Reed Lawadri. Let me double check on that. That's off the plate with a fastball, 2-0. and oh. To Garrett Goshi. Fogarty from the stretch of the pitch. This one lined off the end of the bat into shallow center for a base hit. But it'll get the job done into scores Miles Goshi. And yes, that is Reed Lawadri running out at second. Running for Larson. So Goshi with his third hit of the night. He's a homer away from the cycle. He's got a single, double, triple. Tate Slagle stands in. Slagle singled his last time. Infield single. Also walked and scored. Still two outs. Stretch the pitch by Fogarty. Breaking ball in the dirt. Smothered by Hind, but everybody's going to move up. Luwaji to third. Goshi to second. So the wild pitch moves everybody up, and now a base hit here. Bring in two more. Bulldogs lead is six to four. Stretch the pitch by Fogarty. Breaking ball, got that one over for a called strike, one and one. One ball, one strike. Slagle trying to help his own cause right here. Two runners in scoring position with two away, the pitch. Another breaking ball, another strike, one and two. A 
ball and two strikes. Fogarty trying to get out of the inning here. The stretch of the pitch. Just off the plate with a fastball, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. And two runs in here in the inning. The pitch. So on this one, line out into center field. Berkey coming on. He'll make the catch, and that'll do it. Hit hard, but hit on a line, and Berkey makes the grab to end the inning. Algona gets two more runs on three hits. No errors, and they leave two. After two and a half, it's six to four in favor of the Bulldogs. We're back after this on Hometown Radio, KLGA. When you need cash on the go, there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with MoneyPass. Iowa State Bank is proud to be part of the MoneyPass network of surcharge-free ATMs found nationwide. Look for the green and blue MoneyPass symbol on over 32,000 ATMs across the nation. Or find an ATM near your vacation spot or travel destination at MoneyPass.com. MoneyPass, another way that Iowa State Bank helps people succeed. Member FDIC. If you're not filling with Cenex Premium Diesel, then you're not giving your fuel system the premium treatment. Cenex Roadmaster XL comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn, while restoring your power by up to 4.5% and your fuel economy by up to 5%. Typical number two diesel? I guess it covers the basics. Cenex Premium Diesel. Diesel that doesn't mess around. Contact New Way KH Cooperative, your certified Senex distributor, at 1 800 445 4118. Home half of the third. 6 7 8 for Bishop Garrigan. You got Drew Lappy, Hollis Bodie. And Kyle and Casey do up against Tate Slagle. Six to four in favor of Algona. The Bulldogs have scored two runs in each of their first three at bats. So Lappy takes the first pitch in the dirt for a ball. Swings at the second one, pops it up foul. It's going to get out of play off to the right. That was a hanging breaking ball that he lashed out at and popped it foul. One ball and one strike. Slagle ready to go. That breaking ball is right over for a called strike one and two. Found the range on that one. Home half of the third. Six to four in favor of Algona. Wind up in the pitch by Slagle. Another breaking ball. That one's in the dirt. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Wind up in the pitch by Slagle. At the knees for a called strike three, and there's one down. First time Slagle's retired the leadoff batter tonight. Up next is your shortstop, Hollis Bodie. Fourth strikeout thus far for Slagle. Hollis Bodie stands in. Bodie walked his first time, was stranded over at first base. Swings, pops this one up, foul off to the right, over towards the bleachers at Conway Field. No balls on the strike. Slego ready to go. The pitch. Up and in. Up and in. All the way to the backstop, a la Ricky Vaughn. Kent Lehman's up at one ball and one strike. Slego ready to go. The wind up in the pitch on the way. Breaking ball. That one's a little bit outside. Bodie lays off. Two and one. Listening to Crosstown Baseball tonight here on Hometown Radio, KLGA Algona. Fastball swung on, roped out into center field, coming on is Gomez. He dives, he makes the catch. He robbed Hollis Bodie of a hit. That was tagged by Bodie, but a diving effort by Gomez, and there's two down. That's why baseball is an unfair game right there. That was a great hit, great piece of hitting by Hollis Bodie. Went right back up the middle with it, but Carlos Gomez got a good jump, laid out, and made the grab. Colin Casey stands in. Two up, two down for the Bears here in their half of the third. 
Slegel looking for a 1-2-3 frame. The wind up in the pitch. Breaking ball over for a called strike. 0-1-1. 6-4 to four, Algona. Each team has scored so far on each of their at-bats. Slegel ready to go. Wind up in the 0-1. Another breaking ball. Same spot. Same call. 0-2. And big hook fooled Casey again, and he's down 0-2. Slegel ready to go. They'll wind up in the 0-2 offering on the way. Fastball. Ooh, that was close. He thought he had it. He started walking off. That was just below the kneecaps. Not by much. A ball of two strikes. The pitch from Slegel on the way. The fastball. That one. Uh, that one. Probably a makeup call right there because that one was actually lower. <laughs> but a called strike three, and that'll do it for Garrigan here in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We've played through three. It's Algona six, Bishop Garrigan four. We'll be back in a minute right here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. For sports club members bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Rental Zone, Highway 18 East in Algona. The tool and equipment rental specialist. Phone 395 Rent. Dance Connection and Tumbling by Michelle. Passionate about teaching, creative about dance. Visit their studio at 1400 East Commercial in Algona or Dance Connection by Michelle.com. Daylight Donuts. Open early, serving yummy donuts, rolls, and great coffee. Located at 502 South Phillips Street. Sign works for all your signage needs, as well as printed shirts, caps, and jackets. Stop in or call 295-9544. Farm and Home Services. Check their mini listings at farmhomeservices.com. Pizza Ranch. Eat in or delivery. Catering also available. Tafe Wellness Center, Dr. Shane Tafe, keeping athletes in the game with chiropractic care. Located at 105 South Phillips Street in Algona. All sponsors of this broadcast. Three, four, five for Algona in their half of the fourth. Jensen Aishan, Aiden Ulrich, and Alex Mansky do up against Drew Fogarty. Six to four in favor of Algona. That was the first half an inning where nobody scored so far tonight. Wind up in the pitch to Aishan. Outside with a fastball, 1-0. Oh. Aishan doubled back in the first and popped out to shallow left his last time up. One for two. Fogarty ready to go. Wind up in the pitch on the way. Popped foul out of play. Literally over where we were parked before. That's why we moved our cars. One and one. And there's a vehicle back there. I don't know if they're listening to us or not, but I wouldn't I wouldn't want that one to get hit. One and one the count. Swan fouled back to the screen. I should right on it. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Fogarty looking to retire the leadoff batter for the first time tonight. They wind up in the pitch on the way. Outside corner called strike three, and there's one down. I don't think Jensen liked that call particularly, but his opinion does not matter. Aiden Ulrich stands in. He's 0 for 2. He struck out, popped out. My phone says it's 60 degrees outside, but I don't know if I'm buying that temperature right now. The pitch, breaking ball over for a called strike. That one was a hanger, but Ulrich couldn't pull the trigger. No balls and a strike. Ulrich digging back in. They wind up by Fogarty in the pitch. That's in the dirt with a fastball, one and one. Wind howling out to right field right now. Fogarty ready to go. The wind up in the 1 1 on the way. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Big cut by Ulrich. Came up empty. That was the f- first time that Fogarty's been able to retire the leadoff batter tonight. A ball and two strikes to Aiden Ulrich. Wind up by Fogarty in the pitch. Breaking ball swung on grounded right back to Fogarty in the, on the pitcher's mound. He hit that one one hop and Fogarty able to snag it. Otherwise, it's ticketed for center field. And it's two down. Nice one, two foot out. That brings up 
Here's Alex Mansky. Alex has been on base twice tonight. Walked back in the first. He tripled the lead off the third and scored. The go-ahead run last inning. Is the lights coming on here at Bishop Garrigan? Pitch. Breaking ball. A little bit low. 1-0. Oh. Mansky headed out to that jet stream out to right center. That's where the ball's really carrying tonight with that wind howling that way. The 1-0. Fastball to knees for a called strike, one and one. Carlos Gomez waits on deck forward. He would like to work a one, two, three frame after Slegel just did. The pitch in the dirt with a fastball. Two and one to count. Two balls and a strike. Two outs and nobody on here in the top half of the fourth. Going to leading Garrigan six to four. The wind up in the pitch by Fogarty. Breaking ball, a little bit low, three and one. Three balls and a strike. The pitch. That's ball four. Low with a breaking ball. So Mansky aboard for the third time tonight. Here comes Carlos Gomez. Gomez is 0 for 2, but he's got two RBIs. He's had two RBI ground outs tonight. Fogarty from the stretch, the pitch. Fastball at the knees for a called strike, going one. Mansky with a good lead over at first. Stretching the pitch by Fogarty. The breaking ball over for a called strike, quickly 0-2. Fooled Gomez with that one. And it's 0-2. Fogarty peers in, gets a sign from high, and he's ready to go. 0 2 offering on the way. Fastball swung on this one, skied out into right center field, drifting over is Colin Casey. He slides and makes the catch, and that'll do it for the Bulldogs here in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Halfway home at Bishop Garrigan, it's Algona 6, Garrigan 4. We're back in a minute on Hometown Radio, KLGA. Sports Club members bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Kasuth Regional Health Center. Make KRHC your home for health care. North Iowa Appliance, Highway 18 East Algona, where they sell the best and service the rest. Tom Eichen Sales, your store in the country on Highway 18 West, Algona. Greg Penning and Company, LLC, your tax service professionals in Algona and Bancroft, where everyone counts. Yemlin Builders and Quality Apartments for Rent. Beauty and craftsmanship that will never go out of style. Albert Electric. Flip the switch to Albert Electric. Call Neil at 320-0305. Iowa Lakes Community College. Your community, your college. Feed Mill Coffee Company in downtown Algona, where community connects. All sponsors of this broadcast. Bottom half of the fourth, 9-1-2 for Bishop Garrigan. Justin Bauer, Cal Berkey, Nathan Marin do up. Bauer was hit by a pitch his first time, came around to score back in the second inning. Made a heck of a grab out in left field a couple innings ago on a ball hit by Strand Crouch. 6-4 to four in favor of Algona. And wind up in the pitch from Slegel to Bauer. This one's on grounded slowly towards Aiden Ulrich at third. He's got it on two hops, fires across the diamond in time, one away. Sharply hit, but Ulrich able to pick it and make the throw across. One down. Here's Cal Berkey. He was hit by the first pitch from Slegel. Came around and scored in the first. He's also struck out. All for one on the night with a run scored. Lights are on here at Garrigan. Breaking ball stays up and in. Bottom half of the fourth inning. One ball and no strikes. The wind up in the pitch. Upstairs with a fastball, 2-0. 
Activity in the Garrigan bullpen. So it's swung on and missed by Berkey. Two and one. In between innings, I'll see if I can get uh, White Crouch to give me the pitch count here for each guy. They've been exchanging that every inning. Upstairs, the fastball. Now, Slagle's pitch count cannot be as high as Fogarty's since he's a freshman. Three balls and a strike. The windup in the pitch by Slegel. Fouled at home plate, and it's quickly three and two. He's challenging him with a fastball that time. And here's the payoff pitch. Just missed low, and the count, or as I said, that's ball four. So Cal Berkey on for the second time tonight. Nathan Marin stands in. He's 0 for 2. He grounded out to second his last time. Struck out looking his first. 6 to 4 Algona here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Stretched by Slagle in the pitch. Now he's going to throw over. Chase Berkey back to the bag. Slegel from the belt. It's the sign come set. The pitch. Challenged him with a fastball that time. Marin expanded the zone. That was upstairs, but went after it. And he's down a strike for it. 0 1. Slegel checks Berkey over at first. Stretching the pitch. Runners going. The ball popped away from Larson, so he has no chance to throw out Berkey there. Fastball was a little bit low and away. Wouldn't have been a great pitch to try and handle the throw down to second. But as it is, a ball and a strike. Runner out at second for the Golden Bears after a one-out walk. Stretched by Slag on the pitch. Breaking ball. That one's in there. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Stretching the pitch. Breaking ball swung on grounded sharply towards Erpelding. It's short. He's got it. Throws across, throws high, and that's going to pull Aishin off the bag. Aishin tried to make the tag, but Marin got underneath it. So that'll be the first error of the night. Berkey to third. Tying run now at second base, or at first base, I should say, but likely going to second here in a minute. One out here in the... Home half of the fourth, six to four. Algona leading to the tying runs on base for Garrigan. Stretch by Slagle, and he's gonna he said, try the old fake the third, fake the first, see if somebody maybe falls down. Rolls an ankle, and you can get him out that way, because otherwise yeah, nobody's gonna fall for that fake. Stretch by Slagle on the pitch. No, he's gonna throw over. And that one there, actually, if the throw had been more towards the second base side of the bag. And Mirren leading a little bit. Garrett Hines standing in. He's walked and singled. Gonna throw over again. That one was ooh, that one was closer. That one was on the second base side, and Marin nearly found himself walking back to the dugout, looking down at the grass, because that's a lonely feeling walking back all the way back across the dugout after you got picked off. They throw over again, but that one was off the mark. Hyen digging back in. Hasn't seen a pitch at this at bat. No, oh, yeah. Hyen was the one that flinched for time that time. It's Mirren was off and running, but He'll have to trot back. Stretch by Slagle on the pitch. Breaking ball popped up on the infield. Foul territory. Aishin is not going to have room. It's over the dugout. That was close, but just got out of play. That would have been massive for Al Gilder right there to get a foul out. Keep the runners where they are with two outs, but now it'll start over. 0-1 to Hyde. Stretching the pitch. Another breaking ball. That one's at the belt for a called strike, and Hyde, he knew it. 
too. He even smiled as that one went by. He was fooled. No balls and two strikes. Marin leads from first. Stretched by Slegel on the pitch. Larson actually knocked that down with his bare hand as Slegel kind of short-armed it to home plate. <laughs> Tristan blocked it with his right hand. Marin does go to second, but Berkey could not come home as that one didn't get to the backstop. And on a cold night, that's... That doesn't feel good when it's 85 degrees, but let alone when it's borderline 60 with a 30-mile-an-hour wind. Breaking ball in the dirt. Larson smothers it, and the count evens up at 2-2. Drew Fogarty on deck. Tying run out at second for Garrigan here in their half of the fourth. 6-4, Algona in front. Stretch in the 2-2. Fastball low, and the count now goes full, 3-2. Inning started with a ground out. On a walk to Berkey. Marin reached on a throwing air. And now we go full here to Garrett Height. Slagle resets on the mound here. From the stretch, the payoff pitch. Fastball sails over the head. Here comes Berkey, and he's going to slide in safely. Slagle tried to overthrow that one. Went all the way to the backstop. High and over to first, mirror to third. Chad Slagle is going to make a pitching change right here. So we'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. We'll talk about the pitching change after this here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. With today's technology, there's no reason to wait by the mailbox for bank statements. Just sign up for internet banking and e-statements. This is Sherry at Security State Bank. E-statements reduce the risks of mail fraud and identity theft. Internet banking allows you to check your balances, see checks and deposits that have cleared, transfer funds between accounts, make payments, and say goodbye to paper filing and shredding. Internet banking and e-statements from Security State Bank in Algona, Burt, and Laverne. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. With over a decade of experience, Jake Ingalls Electric is here to handle any electrical job you could possibly have. From anything agricultural related to complex commercial wiring to something simple like installing a new outlet in your home, Jake Ingalls Electric does it all. Have your wiring done right and call Jake at 515-320-4286. Jake Ingalls Electric, shockingly good service. Realize I just played that bumper. We don't want to. We don't want to back to back. As Tate Slagle's night on the mound is done, Garrett Goshi will come into pitch. Early totals on Slagle: three and a third innings pitch. He only allowed two hits. Five runs thus far. All have been earned. Walked five, struck out five, hit a pair of batters. Bulldogs had played er- had played error free baseball until this inning. Throwing air, shortstop Jane Erpel to England. Now he'll come out of the game. Or, no, excuse me, he'll go to second base. Slagle will go to shortstop. That's how they'll move things around. But last night, the Bulldogs, it was a comedy of errors. They had eight through the first three innings. That's why they got down to Spencer, and so they couldn't quite, couldn't, couldn't quite come back. So Garrett Goshi's first appearance of the season comes in with the tying run at third. Go ahead and run at first for Garrigan in their half of the fourth. Six to five right now. Drew Fogarty stands in. Takes a fastball for a called strike. Going one. Fogarty struck out his first time but reached when the ball popped away from Larson on strike three. The last time up he walked and was stranded. Takes a fastball to belt for a called strike, and it's quickly 0-2 as Hyen will take second without a throw. So now the go-ahead run is in scoring position as that wind howls once again. No balls, two strikes. Popped up foul. Heads up concession stand. Look out. Look out. 
Protect the hot dogs at all costs. No balls, two strikes. This one swung on line towards short over the head of Slagle and into left field for a base hit. Gomez over to cut it off. One run is in. Second run's coming around to score as Garrigan takes the lead at 7-6. to six. And that'll close the book on Tate Slagle. Scotia gives up the hit. So Slagle's night is done. Seven runs allowed, six of them earned. Walked five, struck out five. There's that one from Lear in there for a called strike. So, like I said, it didn't start with a ground out. Walk, air, walk, and a single. And Garrigan with the lead at 7 6. Swing on a missed. 0-2. Six runs on eight hits and air for Algona. Seven runs on three hits for Garrigan. Stretch by Goshi in the 0-2. Popped up on the infield. Erpelding's going to make the catch. And sliding back in over at first base was Fogarty. I think he forgot there was only one out. As he was about halfway to second, luckily that was a high pop, and Erpel then had no chance to throw him out once he caught it. Here comes Drew Lappies, 0 for 2. He was put out unassisted on a bunt to first and also struck out looking. Stretching the pitch. Grounded slowly up the middle. Slagle to his left, fields it. He'll step on second base for the force out, and that'll do it here for the Golden Bears in the fourth. But they get three runs on a hit, an error, and they leave one. We have played four. It's now Bishop Garrigan seven, Algona six. We're back here in a minute on Hometown Radio, KLGA. High school sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Brought to you by these sports club members. Algona Frame and Auto Body, Collision Specialist, a total commitment to excellence. Water Connection, from softeners to bottled water and service, call 295 Soft. Dump it. Commercial and residential garbage. They do the dirty work so you don't have to. hy V. Use the fuel saver. Fill your cart. Fuel your car. Agona Livestock Auction. Highway 169 North. Sale every Monday. Lusher Family Dentistry. Serving your family since 1965 on Call Street in Algona. Style Salon. Your salon in Algona. Create yourself. Farmers State Bank, proud to be part of our community for 125 years, with offices in Algona, Whittemore, and West Bend. Chemco Tires, they're all you need to know about tires and service. Sponsoring this broadcast on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Top of the fifth, new pitcher on for Bishop Garrigan. Drew Fogarty's night done after four innings. He allowed eight hits, six runs. They were earned. Walked five, struck out two. Hollis Bodie on in relief. A little sweet home Alabama there. I always wish we had a song about Iowa that was, like, cool. But, you know, like, sweet home Alabama. It's a great tune, but it's about Alabama. We need something catchy like that about Iowa. As Hollis Boney standing in, or excuse me, Hollis Boney to uh, face Miles Goshi, then Tristan Larson, then Stren Crouch. Top half of the fifth inning. Algona's out hitting Garrigan 8-3, to three, but they're behind in the one category that counts. It's run 7-6. Goshi's flown out to right, walked and scored his last time. Takes a breaking ball from Boney outside. One ball and no strikes. Wind up in the pitch. Fastball up and in. Got him in the left shoulder. So a hit by pitch. Miles Goshi will earn the respect of his teammates in the dugout there for wearing that one. Takes that one in the left tricep. And Tristan Larson now stands in. Larson singled his last time. Walked. Was thrown out stealing and was stranded at third. Actually, his courtesy runner should say was stranded at third last time up. Top half of the fifth, tying run on with nobody out for Algona now. 
Larson bunts this one right back to Bodie in the mound. He goes to second. He's going to get the force out. Heads up play there by Hollis Bodie. That was bunted right back to him. It, you got to get it to either side of the pitcher, and Larson did not do that. Right back to Bodie. He makes the throw to second to retire the lead runner. One to six on the put out of Miles Goshi. And Larson aboard on the fielder's choice. Strind Krauts comes in. He's got a triple, and then he, he was retired his last time, but he hit that ball awfully hard. Breaking ball by Bodie in there for a called strike. It was a heck of a play by Justin Bauer to rob him of another extra base hit. Crouch tripled and scored back in the second. Flew out to deep left. And now Bodie throws this one away, trying to get Larson. Larson's going to try and go all the way to third. The relay throw is not in time. The ball got passed. Lappy over at first, and not much chance for the right fielder to back up on that one. So Larson keeps going. That'll be the first error on Bishop Garrigan tonight. And now has the tying run 90 feet away with one out. Top half of the fifth inning. A chilly Friday night here in Algona. Luckily, they're not playing this game tomorrow, though, because it's going to be even colder tomorrow. Stretching the pitch. Chopped foul at home plate by Stren Crouch, and he's down 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Tristan Larson, the tying run, is out at third. I said Crouch has put the ball in play both times, hit the ball hard both times. Bodie steps off on the mound. Still working from the stretch with the runner over at third. Stretching the 0-2. Breaking ball upstairs. Crouch followed that one all the way in. A ball and two strikes. Bodie ready to go. The pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt. Nice smother by Hine. 2-2. Top of the order and Garrett Goshi do up next. He's three for three. Stretching the pitch. Crouch swings and fouls this one straight back. That one might have been up and out of the zone, but good piece of hitting by Crouch right there. Never put it in the umpire's hands. Fight it off, make him throw another pitch. The 2-2 offering from Bodie. Popped foul, out of play down the third base side. Crouch got out in front of a breaking ball that time. Bodie from the stretch, the pitch. Swung on line out into left field. That's going to be down for a base hit. Bauer looked like he might be able to get to it initially, but he pulls up. Strand Crouch, his second hit of the night, drives in the tie and run, and it's 7-7. to Here's Garrett Goshi. Garrett's doubled, tripled, and singled tonight. If he can get one up into the breeze, go, maybe go opposite field, hit that, uh, hit that home run. Oh, and now Bodie throws it away. I don't, Lappy, I don't think, was actually looking. And Strend Crouch, was, he wasn't looking himself. He was kind of caught off guard there, but Lappy was not ready. And going down to second now will be Strend Crouch. That's a tough one right there because if everybody's on the same page, you might have them picked off, but they definitely were not right there. Stretching the pitch. Upstairs with a fastball is Hollis Bodie. One ball and no strikes. Stretch the pitch to go. She's a breaking ball in the dirt. Hein smothers that one. Two and them. Two balls and no strikes. Bodie ready to go. That's a fastball to belt for a called strike. Two and one. Bodie peers in, gets a sign from high, and he's ready to go. The 2 1 offering to Garrett Goshi. Ooh, just missed with an off speed pitch there, and the count goes to 3 and 1. Didn't miss by much. 
Top half of the fifth, 7-7 seven to seven now. Stretch the pitch. Oh, right off the end of the bat. Goshi got out in front of that one and cued it off the end of the bat right into the on-deck circle. Tate Slegel picks it up. The stretch and the payoff pitch. Fouled back and out of play. It was a breaking ball that Goshi got out in front of, but fouled it off. Three and two. Count remains full. Stretch in the pitch from Bodie. This one dumped out into shallow right. It's going to get down for a base hit. Crouch around third. He's being waved home. Here comes the throw. Not going to be in time. Heading to second is Goshi. The relay back to second is not in time. As Colin Casey threw through. Strend Crouch able to beat the throw, and then Goshi heads up. It's down to second, so it's a single. RBI single there for Garrett Goshi. The Bulldogs back in front now at 8-7. This is a back-and-forth ball game tonight. Tate Slagel stands in. He hit the ball hard his last time, but right to Berkey out in center. As Singleton walked, scored once. Stretching the pitch by Bodie. Swung on this one, roped out into center, but it's right at Berkey again. He's going to make the catch. They throw back to second, but Goshi gets back in time. That one was hit hard again, but on a line right to Cal Berkey out in the center. And there's two down for Jensen Aishan. Aishan, a strikeout victim his last time. has flown out to left and doubled back in the first. One for three tonight. Chance to give the Bulldogs a two-run lead with a base hit here with Goshi out at second. Stretching the pitch. This one's swung on skied out into center. Berkey's there. Takes a couple steps to his left. Makes the catch, and that'll do it for Algona in the fifth. But they get two runs on two hits, a couple of errors, and they leave one. We have played through four and a half. It's now Algona in front, eight to seven. Back after this quick timeout here at Hometown Radio, KLGA. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission, to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments. It's about taking care of people, and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone, Joint, and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. When you need cash on the go, there's no need to pay a surcharge fee with MoneyPass. Iowa State Bank is proud to be part of the MoneyPass network of surcharge-free ATMs found nationwide. Look for the green and blue MoneyPass symbol on over 32,000 ATMs across the nation. Or find an ATM near your vacation spot or travel destination at MoneyPass.com. MoneyPass, another way that Iowa State Bank helps people succeed. Member FDIC. Bottom of the fifth, seven, eight, nine for Bishop Garrett against Hellas Bodie, Colin Casey, Justin Bauer do up against Garrett Goshi. Bodie now on to pitch for Bishop Garrigan. Takes that one low. Bodie was robbed of a hit his last time up on a line drive up the middle that Carlos Gomez made a diving catch out in center. It's also walked tonight. 0 for 1. Chops this one foul at home plate. County moves up at a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike. We're in the home half of the fifth. Game hit. Pace picked up a little bit. It was pretty slow through the first two innings. So it's one on grounded slowly towards short. Slagle's got it on two hops. Fires across in time to get Bodie by a step, and there's one away. Six to three on the put out of Hollis Bodie, and here comes Colin Casey. A strikeout victim is two times up tonight. Oh, actually going to have a pinch hitter here. Let's see. K. 
Keaton Helseth, the freshman, is going to come on and hit for Callum Casey. Keaton is actually cousins with Aiden Ulrich over third base there for um, Algona. He'll get his first hit bat of the varsity level this year. Swings at a fastball and misses 0-1. Justin Bauer on deck. Nobody out, or excuse me, one out, nobody on here in the home half of the fifth. Foul that home plate. That one got a whole lot of Tristan Larson's mask. And it's 0-2. 8-7 to in favor of Algona High. Congratulations going out to Bishop Gehrig and Junior Audie Crooks. Won another state title today, this time in the discus. So she's got two for the weekend this year. Last year, did not win the discus, won the shot last year. So she's a two-time state shot put champion. Now she's got a discus title to go with it. Fastball upstairs to Helseth. One and two. Goshi ready to go. This one chopped slowly to his cousin at third. Ulrich's got it. Throws the first in time to retire his blood, and it's two down. Two down for Justin Bauer. Bauer is grounded to third. Was also hit by a pitch and scored back in the second. Goshi would like to get a 1-2-3 frame here. Not been many of those tonight. Actually, there's only been one. Wind up in the pitch. Bauer swings it one up in the eyes and fouls it back. 0-1. Bottom half of the fifth with Bishop Garrigan trailing Algona 8-7. Goshi ready to go. Wind up in the pitch. Popped foul. It's going to get out of play over the Garrigan dugout down the third base side and count quickly at 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Goshi peers in. He's ready to go. The pitch chopped slowly up the right side. Goshi, he's not going to get to it before it goes foul. But it stayed on the grass. He would have had a chance, but once it kicked to that dirt, bounded into foul territory. So still 0-2. Goshi ready to go. The wind up and the pitch in the dirt. One and two. Trying to get that one, two, three frame right here. See, at risk of angering the gods, the wind that looked like had died down for a second, but the flag's still kind of moving. Just off the plate with a fastball there, two and two. Goshi ready to go. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch on the outside for a called strike three. Took it the first time. That time it was close enough. And the Bears down in order here in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. Five in the books here at Bishop Garrigan. It's Algona in front of the Golden Bears by a count of eight to seven. We'll take a quick timeout. Come back. More from Bishop Garrigan right after this here on Hometown Radio. KLGA. High School Sports on Hometown and Home Country Radio, brought to you by these sports club members. Catholic Charities, offering professional counseling services to families and individuals of all faiths. Learn more at cathchar.com. Algona Plumbing and Heating, where a good flush always beats a full house. Grassmasters, get tips and advice from their lawn care professionals. Grassmasters, growing satisfied customers. American Glass, for all your glass needs. Think American. Walker Chiropractic and Wellness, serving Algona, Sway City, and the surrounding areas with chiropractic, nutritional care, and physical therapy services. Dr. Bill Stroman, giving you something to smile about. CB Grain Solutions, satisfaction guaranteed. Runky Brothers Full Service. Experience the Runky Brothers difference for all your auto service and repair needs. Sponsoring this broadcast on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Top of the sixth, four, five, six for Algona here as they 
come up against Hollis Bode. Aiden Ulrich, Alex Mansky, Carlos Gomez. Ulrich looking for his first hit of the night. Hit the ball hard his last time, but Fogarty snagged it on one hop on the circle, or on the mound, I should say, and threw him out over at first. Bode ready to go, the pitch. Swung grounded slowly to the right side. Knocked down at second by Marin. He'll throw to first in time, and there's one away. As Ulrich went after that first pitch there. Grounded soft with a second. And brings up Alex Mansky. Mansky's been on base all three times. Tonight he's walked twice, tripled, and scored. Eight to seven in favor of Algona. Eight runs, ten hits, an air for Algona. Seven runs on three hits and two errors for Garrigan. This one chopped to the right side. That is a foul ball. Just past the first base bag. 0-1 the count. No balls and a strike. The pitch to Mansky. Up and in, nearly hit him. Getting a little chin music there. Making sure he's awake. One ball, one strike. Wind up by Bodie in the pitch. In the dirt with an off-speed delivery that time. Two and one. Carlos Gomez waits on deck. Bodie ready to go. The two-one off for Demansky. In there for a called strike with a change up there. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on here in the top half of the sixth inning. Algona clinging to a one-run lead. The pitch. This one ripped foul. As he was protecting on that one. That was up in the eyes. Slapped it out of play to the right. Two balls, two strikes. Bodie ready to go. The pitch to Mansky. He's in the dirt with a breaking ball. The count goes full now. Three and two. Three balls and two strikes. Bodie gets the one he wants from Hyde. He's ready to go. The payoff pitch to Mansky. Swung this one belted into deep or into center field, should say. But uh, Berkey coming on makes the catch. Thought it was hit harder initially. Berkey able to come on and make the grab, and there's two down. Allen's got under that one a little bit. Two down for Carlos Gomez. Gomez 0 for 3. A couple RBI ground outs. Hit the ball hard his last time, but uh, Colin Casey made a nice, nice catch on the run out in right center. That one hung up for him there. Wind up by Bodie in the pitch. This one ripped into left field. It's going to be a base hit. No chance for Fogarty at short to get to that one, and Berkey gets it back in quickly. First hit of the night for Carlos Gomez. He's aboard with two outs. Miles Goshi stands in. He's walked, was hit by a pitch, and has flown out to right. So 0 for 1 tonight. He was the first batter that Bodie faced last inning. Got hit in the left shoulder. Quick throw over by Bodie, but Gomez back in time. Bulldogs got two runs in the first, second, third, and fifth. Stretch by Bodie, another quick toss over. This one gets past Lappy again. Gomez digging around second. He thought about three initially, but they get it back in quickly. And that is the third time that Bodie's tried to pick someone off over at first base and it's gotten away. Garrigan has three errors tonight, and they're all on pickoff throws to first. Now a base hit here by Goshi could bring in an insurance run for the Bulldogs. Stretching the pitch. High and away. One ball and no strikes. And that one there, if you're the first baseman, Lappy, you just got to smother that ball. That was well short. Wasn't going get to the, get the runner. You got to smother the one. You can't, get, let, let, can't let it get past. Breaking ball stays high. 2-0. Two balls and no strikes. Goshi ready to go. So is Hollis Bodie. The stretch. 
in the pitch. That one chopped foul at home plate. Kind of an excuse me swing by Goshi there. But also to that point, they got two outs. Go get the batter. Go get you got a runner at first, two outs, just go get the batter. Don't worry about it. You get the batter, and that guy doesn't matter at all. Two balls and a strike. And stretching the pitch. High with a breaking ball. Kevin goes to three and one. The catcher, Tristan Larson, waits on deck. Bodie ready to go from the belt. The three one. Breaking ball over for a called strike. Three and two. Full count here. Gomez leads from second. Base hit to the grass would definitely score him. 3-2. Inside to hit him. But Gomez was off and running, so he's got to go back. But for the second time, Hollis Bodie has hit Miles Goshi. Didn't mean to with that one. It's Rob Meister out to talk to his senior right-hander. There was activity in the Garrigan bullpen when they were up to bat this past frame. Tristan Larson adjusting the socks right now. Doesn't look like Bodie's coming out right at this moment. Big spot here. You got a one-run game, two runners on, two outs. You had the first two guys, ground out, fly out. On a single to left. And now a hit batter on a 3-2 pitch. So really that throwing air inconsequential at this point. It's Tristan Larson reached on a fielder's choice. His last time he tried to bunt, bunted it right back to Bodie who threw out the lead runner. Larson eventually came in to score. Base hit by Garrett Goshi. Also has a single and a walk tonight. He's been on base each time. Stretching the pitch by Bodie. He's in the dirt, smothered by Hyen. Otherwise, everybody's moving up 90 feet. A ball and no strike to Tristan Larson. Bodie from the stretch. The pitch. Up and in, nearly got him, and Larson had to get the bat out of the way. Don't want to give up a strike because the ball hits your bat when it's behind your head. It's happened. 2-0 the count. Stretching the pitch. Breaking ball, that one's over for a called strike. 2-1. Strand Crouch is on deck. Bodie from the belt. Two balls and a strike here to Larson. Now he's going to step off. Chases Gomez back to the bag. Bodie from the stretch. The pitch. Breaking ball. Swung on a miss for strike three. Run, Tristan. Run. That's strike. No, that's only strike two. Excuse me. I thought that was strike three for a second. Like, dude, you got to run. But he knows better than I because that was only strike two. Everybody else moves up 90 feet. And now two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. And two in scoring position. 2-2. Two, two. Swan dumped down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. It's foul. Bodie trying to get out of this threat right here without anything across. Bodie fakes a throw to third, tracks Gomez back. There wasn't anybody covering. Two balls, two strikes. Bodie from the belt, the pitch. Breaking ball, swung on into the mitt of Hyen as Larson got a piece of it, but... Hyen hangs on, and it's a strikeout for Bodie. It ends the threat. No runs on a hit, an error, and a two left in scoring position. We've played five and a half, eight, seven in favor of Algona. Quick timeout. Back with more after this here on Hometown Radio, KLGA. 
Sports Club members bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Kasuth Regional Health Center. Make KRHC your home for health care. North Iowa Appliance, Highway 18 East Algona, where they sell the best and service the rest. Tom Eichen Sales, your store in the country on Highway 18 West, Algona. Greg Penning and Company, LLC, your tax service professionals in Algona and Bancroft, where everyone counts. Yemlin Builders and Quality Apartments for Rent. Beauty and craftsmanship that will never go out of style. Albert Electric. Flip the switch to Albert Electric. Call Neil at 320-0305. Iowa Lakes Community College. Your community, your college. Feed Mill Coffee Company in downtown Algona, where community connects. All sponsors of this broadcast. Bottom of the sixth, top of the order for Bishop Garrett and Cal Berkey. Nathan Marin, Garrett Hine doing up against do up against Garrett Goshi. 8-7 Algona in front. Berkey takes that one low into the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Berkey's walked, was hit by a pitch, struck out tonight. He's been on base twice, scored twice. Takes that one high. 2-0. 8-7 in favor of Algona. Goshi ready to go. 2-0 offering. This one ripped into left field. It's going to get down for a base hit. No chance for Manski. Gets it back in quickly. Lead off single here for Berkey, and he's the tying run here in the bottom of the sixth. Eight runs on 11 hits, one error for Algona. Seven runs, four hits, three errors for Bishop Garrigan. Nathan Marin stands in. Reached on an error and scored his last time. Ulrich in on the grass, expecting a bunt right here. Stretching the pitch. Does show bunt, and he missed it. Fastball was high, and he went after it. Didn't get it. 0-1. Said Marin struck out, grounded out, and... Reached on a throwing in his last time. 8 7 Algona. Tying run is aboard here in the bottom of the sixth for Bishop Garrigan. Stretched by Goshi in the pitch. Marin shows bunt, takes a fastball over the outside corner, and it's 0 2. Now the Bulldogs will back up a bit. 0 2 the count to Marin. Goshi from the belt, looks at Berkey over at first, stretching the pitch. He tries to bunt, he bunts foul, he's out. He went for it and didn't get it down, and that'll be a strikeout, one away. Next up, catcher Garrett Hyde. They rolled the dice that time with Marin trying to get the bunt down with two strikes. Didn't work, and that one there, Marin's got to know he doesn't have to offer at it. That one was low, looked like low the whole way. Goshi from the stretch, the pitch. In there for a call strike runner going as the ball got past Larson momentarily. The throw down to second is not in time. So now the tying run is in scoring position. It's just like the sacrifice worked. As high he took the strike, he's walked twice and singled once. Stretching the pitch. Up and in, and it hits him. So now he's been on base four times. Takes that one for the team. Drew Fogarty stands in. Fogarty singled his last time. He walked and struck out back in the first, but he struck out but reached on a drop third strike. Stretching the pitch by Goshi. Swung on and missed by Fogarty. He had a cut, came up empty. Bulldogs will have 9 1 2 in their half of the seventh when they come up. Stretching the pitch. This one's smothered by Larson. Goshi trying to preserve the lead for him right now. Ball and a strike to Drew Fogarty. Jacob Lear on deck. One ball, one strike. The pitch. At the knees for a called strike. One and two. Now 
One ball, two strikes. Tying run and go-ahead runs are on base for Bishop Garrigan. Stretching the pitch. Grounded slowly towards short. Slegel has it. Underhands to second. Not in time. Good hustle there from first for by Garrett Hine. It was a slow roller. Slegel underhanded to Erpelding, trying to get the force out, and Hine beat it. And now the bases are loaded, so Fogarty's safe on the fielder's choice. And Jacob Lear stands in. He singled his first time, has grounded out, and popped out since then. Swings and misses. Had a healthy cut. Came up empty, 0-1. Bases loaded, only one out. Tying run at third. Go ahead and run now at second for Bishop Irrigan. Stretching the pitch. Chopped foul. That time, that might have been a little bit low. Lear went after it anyway. But if you're Garrett Ghost, you'd like a strikeout or a pop-up on the infield, something like that right here. If you're Garrigan, you got to have Lear put this ball in play. Stretch in the 0-2. In the dirt, smothered by Larson, 1-2. and two. Drew Lappy on deck. Goshi ready to go. Ahead one ball and two strikes against Jacob Lear. Stretch the pitch. In the dirt. Smothered again by Tristan Larson. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Bases are loaded. No place to put Jacob Lear. From the belt. Goshi ready to go. The pitch. Up high. Ball three. Like I said, no place to put him. A walk ties the game. Three balls, two strikes, one out. And the base is loaded for Bishop Garrigan. Goshi's going to back off. He wants to talk to Tristan Larson. Got time. Oof. As the wind howls a little bit. And assistant coach Caden Wadley coming out as well. Infield's going to come in. That fielder's choice a moment ago that Fogarty reached on. It was a slow roller. Slagle charged it, but it was just good hustle by Hyde to beat it out at second base. So here we go again. Three balls and two strikes. Base is loaded here in the bottom of the sixth. Bishop Gerrigan trailing by one. Goshi trying to bear down. He was ahead 0-2. The pitch. Inside ball, four-game tie. Didn't miss by much, but ball four. There is RBI walk. We'll end up bringing up first Game's now tied at eight. Now, if you're Garrigan, you got a chance to put a couple runs across here. Try and close the door in the top of the seventh. The stretch by Goshi, the pitch. Swung on and missed by Drew Lappy. 0-1. And that's tough there. Goshi was up 0-2. Comes, ends up walking in the go- tying run. The stretch and the pitch. Upstairs and it hit him. And then go-ahead run comes in. So Drew Lappy gets hit by a pitch. Second hit batter this inning. And that brings up Hollis Bodie. Nine to eight now in favor of Garrigan. They've got one hit this inning. That was the leadoff batter, Berkey. Strikeout, hit batter, fielder's choice, walk, hit batter. Stretching the pitch. In the dirt, smothered nicely there by Larson, 1-0. One ball, no strikes. Goshi ready to go the pitch. At the knees for a called strike, one and one. Listening to Algona and Bishop Garrigan baseball tonight here on Hometown Radio. KLGA Algona along the internet as well at algonaradio.com. They get the squeeze play on, and it's going to work to perfection. Bodie gets the bunt down. The run comes in to score. Fogarty is safe. Hollis Bodie executes there. The suicide squeeze was on. Fogarty was coming. 
If Hollis doesn't get it, he's hung out the dry, but one to three on the sacrifice bunt. And that brings in another run, and it's now 10-8 Garrigan. As Colin Casey stands in. Got to thank our streaming sponsors tonight. First to stream of the summer season, although it doesn't feel like summer tonight. Well, those include your Camden Motor Center in Algona. Algona Municipal Utilities, where they are community-owned for community benefit. Your State Farm Insurance agent, Billy Offerman, in Algona. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Billy probably wears the khakis quite a bit over there at the State Farm there. Also, thanks to High End Endeavors, one of our great sponsors, helping us bring these video streams to you. Quickly, two balls and no strikes to Colin Casey. This one's not popped up behind the first base bag. Jaden Erpelding and Jensen Eichen go after it. Eichen makes the catch, and that'll do it for Bishop Garrigan here in the sixth. But they get three runs on a grand total of one hit. No errors, and they leave two. We have played six complete. It's now Bishop Garrigan 10, Algona 8. We're back in a minute. You're on Hometown Radio, KLGA. If you're not filling with Cenex Premium Diesel, then you're not giving your fuel system the premium treatment. Cenex Roadmaster XL comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn, while restoring your power by up to 4.5% and your fuel economy by up to 5%. Typical number two diesel? I guess it covers the basics. Cenex Premium Diesel. Diesel that doesn't mess around. Contact New Way KH Cooperative, your certified Senex distributor, at 1 800 445 4118. For over 40 years, Northwest Iowa Bone Joint and Sports Surgeons have maintained one mission, to provide excellence in orthopedic care. Their team of nine physicians offer specialized care in everything from arthroscopic same-day surgery to joint replacement as well as hand and foot surgery and have an orthopedic surgeon on call 24-7. Healthcare isn't about appointments, it's about taking care of people, and that's their specialty. Visit Northwest Iowa Bone Joint and Sports Surgeons on the web at nwiabone.com. As we come back, top of the seventh, 9-1-2 for, Bish- or for Algona. And they now find themselves down 10-8, giving up three runs in the top half of the inning. Or excuse me, bottom half of the sixth, I should say. Strand Crouch quickly down 0-2. The pitch, breaking ball, swung on and miss. No, they were, as I say, the scoreboard was a little ahead there. It was one. It was one and one at the time. Now it's one and two to Strand Crouch. Crouch has a couple of hits tonight. This one swung on, ripped down the left field line, but it's going to hook foul. That had extra bases written all over it, but just hooked foul. Garrett Goshi do up next. He's four for four tonight. Tate Slegle. Anybody reaches Jensen Eichen. The Bulldogs need at least two. Otherwise, they're going to fall to 0-3 on the season. Bodie ready to go, trying to close the door here. Wind up in the pitch. Swung on this one. Skied out into left center field. Coming in is Cal Berkey. He's there. He makes the catch. One away. Hit well, but Crouch got underneath that one. Garrett Goshi doubled his first time, tripled his second, is singled twice, scored twice. But he's on the hook for the loss on the mound right now if the Bulldogs do not rally. Wind up in the pitch. Inside and low, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Wind up in the pitch. Floats a breaking ball across, one and one. Eight runs on 11 hits for Algona. Ten runs on four hits for Bishop Garrigan. The pitch. Breaking ball chopped slowly foul up the third baseline, and the count goes to one and two. (laughs) 
A ball and two strikes. Bodie ready to go. Lined up in the pitch. Breaking ball. Ooh, didn't miss by much. 2-2. Two, two. That's awfully close to be taken right there at the top of the seventh. Two balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Outside for ball three. Bodie ready to go. Payoff pitch to Garrett Goshi. He's a breaking ball in the dirt for ball four. So Goshi's aboard for the fifth time. Tate Slagle stands in. Slagle's flown out twice, singled and walked. Hit the ball hard his last two times, but right to, right to Cal Berkey each time. Bodie from the stretch, the pitch. Upstairs, one ball and no strikes. Bulldogs need at least one more base runner. Get the tie and run aboard. Bodie from the stretch, the pitch. Breaking ball swung on, popped foul. It's going to get out of play down the right field line. Got even up at the ball and a strike. Garrett Goshi over at first. One out here in the top of the seventh. Garrigan now in front, 10-8. They've had three three innings where they've got three runs, including the bottom of the sixth. This one chopped towards third. Lear knocks it down. He's going to have to throw to first. Throws late, but gets Slagle by a step. And now there's two down. This job by... Lear to, able to pick that ball up on a short hop. Thought about second for a moment and then thought better of it. Made the throw across the diamond with a two-run lead. Don't give him a chance for the big inning. Now it's up to Jensen Eichen. Takes high, one ball and no strikes. He's flown out twice, struck out, and doubled. One for four. Bodie from the stretch. Looks the runner at second, the pitch. This one swung on, hit softly towards second, fielded by Marin. The throw to first is in time, and Bishop Garrigan defeats Algona tonight by a count of 10-8. to eight. We'll take a two-minute timeout, two-minute break. Back to wrap things up after this on Hometown Radio. More sports club members bringing you this broadcast. Jensen Chiropractic, care for the whole family. Countryside Barbecue Sauce, two sauces for all seasons. Purpleton Excavating, let them take care of your grading, excavating, and drainage needs. Farm Bureau Financial Services, coverage and protection for what matters most. Visit with local agents David Weiss, Jason Brace, Daniel Folk, and Michael Toll. Sudal Tax and Accounting, full-service tax and accounting services from the professionals at Sudal Tax and Accounting. Call 395-1040. They see beyond the numbers. Holmes Animal Clinic, caring for your pets from their location at Highway 18 East. They now have an indoor unit to serve equine, cattle, sheep, and goats. Also, on-site boarding for cats and dogs. Ocrest Funeral Services, helping families celebrate a life lived. All members of the sports club bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. More sports club members bringing you this game on Hometown and Home Country Radio. Rental Zone, Highway 18 East in Algona. The tool and equipment rental specialist. Phone 395 Rent. Dance Connection and Tumbling by Michelle. Passionate about teaching, creative about dance. Visit their studio at 1400 East Commercial in Algona or danceconnectionbymichelle.com. Daylight Donuts, open early, serving yummy donuts, rolls, and great coffee. Located at 502 South Phillips Street. Sign works for all your signage needs, as well as printed shirts, caps, and jackets. Stop in or call 295-9544. Farm and Home Services, check their mini listings at farmhomeservices.com. Pizza Ranch, eat in or delivery, catering also available. Tafe Wellness Center, Dr. Shane Tafe, keeping athletes in the game with chiropractic care. Located at 105 South Phillips Street in Algona. All sponsors of this broadcast.
We come back to wrap things up tonight here on Hometown Radio KLGA as Bishop Geerga defeats Algona. Golden Bears go to 1-0, Algona to 0-3 for Bishop Geerga. The victorious Golden Bears, 10 runs on four hits. They commit three errors. They left seven runners on base. Hollis Bodie gets the win in relief. And with the final three innings, gave up two runs on three hits. They were earned. He walked one, struck out one, hit two batters. For Algona, they fall to 0-3. Bulldogs had eight runs on 11 hits. They commit one error. They left 10 runners on base. Uh, Miles Goshi, a tough loss for him. Uh, tonight, or excuse me, Garrett Goshi, uh, the losing pitcher tonight for the Bulldogs. As he uh, came on in relief in the fourth inning, Tate Slegel threw three in the third. Gave up seven runs, six of them earned on just two hits. And then Goshi uh, comes in, gives up three runs. They're in that bottom half of the sixth inning on just one Garrigan hit. Uh, hit batter, a walk, uh, a suicide squeeze, and that's how things get done. But Garrigan wins it. They go to 1-0, and Algona falls to 0-3 on the season. Got to thank all of our sponsors for making the broadcast a possibility here this evening. Thanks to Bernie Merrill for a run of the camera on our live video stream, as we'll have more coverage coming your way next week right here on Hometown Radio. A reminder, stay tuned tomorrow. More live updates from the State Track and Field Championships. Tyler Lance is down in Des Moines. He'll have more live updates throughout the day tomorrow right here on Hometown Radio. Once again, the final from Bishop Garrick. The Golden Bears win the Crosstown Showdown over Algona by a final count of 10-8. to 8. For Bernie on the camera, my name is Brian Wilson. This has been a sports presentation of Hometown Radio.